Today, we are banning a card in Popper, and there might even be more on the horizon. Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast. Now, normally when we do a Popper ban and restricted announcement, there's the article that goes up on the website, and then my video, which kind of echoes what the website says with some images and kind of in moving form. But today, I wanna to try something a little bit different. Today, the article on the website, you can go check it out on dailymtg.com, is going to cover the, the direct rationale and kind of the in-depth analysis. And then I wanted to do this as more of a companion piece, just me talking with you about what our feelings on the format are, kind of on a, well, not one-on-one -on -one basis because it's me talking to a camera, but you know, kind of more like a more one-on-one -on -one feel, I suppose. And I'm just curious what you think about this. So let me know in the comments down below. If you like this, I'll do more like this in the future. If you don't like this method and you prefer the older one, that's great. You can drop that and I'll work on that for the next to be in our announcement too. All right, so today we are banning the card, All That Glitters in Popper. Um, there's a number of reasons for this and I'm gonna get into them today. First of all though, I wanna talk about, about the timing. So we've been talking about a potential ban in Popper on the Popper format panel for a while. And as a reminder, the Popper format panel is the group that helps manage the Popper format. So there's uh, me and six others and we all work together to help uh, figure out what we want to do with, with the format and kind of look forward to um, yeah, you know, like what the metagame is and what decks are strong and if everything's balanced. Uh, we also get access to all the data for Magic Online as well to kind of inform our decisions here. Um, and we definitely have noticed a huge rise um, in this card, All That Glitters. So we started looking at this um, about a month and a half ago, pretty seriously, and talking back and forth, tr looking at potential builds of decks, um, chatting about those a bunch. And then uh, a few weeks ago, we kind of came to the conclusion of what we wanted to do. Um, the reason why it kind of took a little bit longer to get out, I know I said I had a video out last week talking about this, is because today there's this kind of large announcement. It's this ban restricted um, day for um, across all formats. And we wanted to roll Popper into that since it's a big day um, in that sense. And also because this sticker change was happening, which I'll get to a little bit more later in the video, but the TLDR is that stickers and attractions are essentially um, banned out of competitive events. Popper was going to take this change as well. And so it really made sense to kind of do it all at the same time instead of have like a BNR, I don't know, a week and a half ago and then another one today where we banned even more cards. Uh, I do know it's kind of unfortunate timing for one particular event in Japan, the God of Popper tournament, which this weekend, I believe, um, is a pretty big Popper tournament happening. So this will have the metagame freshly shaken up for better or worse. Um, but we knew bannings were going to happen anyway because st uh, of the sticker change. So anything with um, name sticker goblin or sticker stomp or decks like that would also become invalid. So it made sense to kind of roll all these things together and you know make this change on, on this day. But there might be more changes coming in the future, which I'll, I'll get to here in a little bit. Okay, so first let's talk about all that glitters. This is a problematic card um, uh, that, that we had to take action on. It first got downshifted last year, and since then it has really grown in popularity. It showed up in Commander Masters and has really started to grow and grow in popularity. And it started kind of in these like blue-white artifact decks and then moved to these blue-white-red artifact decks with an affinity style shell. And at first it was cute. You would uh, slap an all that glitters on a ginger brute. That's neat and novel. Um, but quickly uh, this cute thing became a strong thing. And then over the past couple months in particular, um, it has really evolved to not just show up there, but also in decks like Red White Synthesizer, which is pretty easy to splash this in. You just play some um, extra artifact lands maybe. You have you know eight Thrabid Inspectors you can play now. It's pretty straightforward to have a ton of artifacts in play. And you can just slap that thing on a Glint Hawk and start crunking uh, your opponent for a ton of damage. Um, we, uh, we knew this, this created some challenging gameplay for a couple of reasons. One of the things that it really creates is it's very feast or famine style gameplay. Early in the game, if you slam down a all that glitters, you're basically saying, do you have a removal spell? If you don't have a removal spell, you're just gonna lose, right? I'm gonna put this on my creature, it's gonna start attacking you, dealing a ton of damage, and uh, there, there's, it's gonna be very, very difficult to race, especially if you put it on like a life linker or anything like that too, it becomes very, very challenging to race. If they do have a, remo a removal spell, then well, use two for one to yourself. So there is a risk there, like, like all auras. But the gameplay is not the most fun. It creates this kind of polar nature, something we've been trying to push away from in Popper for a little while recently. 
Um, that's part of the reason why we banned Swift Spear from Mono Red. Mono Red was really creating some polar games, and we'll get to more on Mono Red in a bit. But Swift Spear was, I think, one of the biggest offenders of the polarization because turn one Swift Spear, or even more Swift Spears, if you have a hand with two Swift Spears, it was so easy to deal a ton of damage really quickly um, with a good draw, and it became a very polar situation. And all the glitters does some similar things, where it creates these very polar games, and it has the added side effect of not being able to tap out against these decks. Because if you ever tap out or tap low against a deck with all the glitters, it's very easy for them to slam down two from their hand in the late game, when they have a ton of artifacts and play in artifact lands, and just clock you for, you know, whatever, 10, 15 plus damage, um, which creates these very high tension games that, that and not tension in a good way. Some tension in magic is good. This is not the most fun kind of tension from a game design perspective. So it both creates some non-games early on, put a lot of pressure on every deck to have an answer for this card effect early, and could kill you out of nowhere in the late game. Now, we did talk about some alternatives. One that we go back to all the time, we've talked about these probably more than any other card in Popper, are the Artifact Lands. Both the Bridges and the original Mirrodin Artifact Lands. Um, we started by looking at the Bridges, and kind of, when you talk about one thing so many times, at some point you should be like, guys, we, we need to pull the ripcord on this one, you know? Like... For a long time in Magic, we kept banning three mana cost black spells until eventually we banned Dark Ritual because that's what was enabling three mana cost black spells. And in some ways, the bridges are the enablers to what was happening here. Um, so that was something we talked about pretty seriously. And then we tried looking at, at the lists and how they would evolve and change. And the it wasn't clear that knocking the bridges would do enough, actually, to impact all the glitters. Now, it, it does reduce the amount of indestructible and, and the mana fixing artifact lands for sure um and maybe it opens you up to some weaknesses to ancient grudge and, and the like but a lot of those decks use, use uh, still have some untapped lands left to spare they could play and it's pretty easy to fill your deck back in with a couple more artifact lands and you really only lose maybe two-ish total artifact lands out of your deck which is not even necessarily a substantial hit to the power level of this card which is probably you know potentially problematic or, or is so problematic we're gonna ban it today um so those artifact lands, the bridges actually were not the biggest culprits we felt here. We then looked at the Mirrodin artifact lands, which are pretty big culprits as ones that enter the battlefield untapped and are pretty free to play. For example, in a deck like Synthesizer, you only really want to play your four on color bridges at that if you're even playing four of them, uh, because the coming to play tapped nature is a real danger with those cards. And entering untapped um, with as the Mirrodin artifact lands do is so impactful. Um, so we could cut all the Mirrodin Artifact lands, and that would, I think, substantially impact the power of all the glitters. The thing to me there is, unlike the bridges, the Mirrodin Artifact lands have been around for so long and have such a long history in Popper and are really kind of baked into the format. Is keeping this all around worth axing all the Artifact lands? To me, the answer is probably no. It's, this is a new card that's causing some problems. These are an old beloved cycle for the format let's get rid of the new thing and let, let you continue to play with the old fun thing. Especially because Popper is sort of this huge format full of nostalgia and these cards people like. And I, you know, th this um, this newer card is uh, not nearly as beloved as the original Artifact Lands were. So we talked about it for a while and yeah, we just came back to all the glitters. That's the, you know, uh, we evaluated the options. That seemed, seemed like the clear pick that would impact um, the, the gameplay here. And I think the other thing I want to go back to on that is it just isn't that fun. Like the play pattern is not one that we particularly enjoy. The decks were successful, certainly, but the their win percentage wasn't so ridiculously high that if it was a super fun thing people were enjoying, we would need to take action. But it's the number of people being like, this is not fun, this is frustrating, uh, communicating to us to that, uh, that about the format was really high with this one. And so we just decided to take action on all the glitters um, for that reason. Um, the next up question was, should we ban a card for Mono Red? Mono Red has grown uh, in popularity. Um, you know, with Swift Sphere banned, it dipped for a little bit, and then it's kind of come back up, especially with a couple new tools that's picked up. Um, and Red is quite strong. Um, it's a very, very strong strategy. Now, I, I'm curious to see how, it, you know, if w all with all the glitters being banned, if that kind of changes the temperature of how popular and strong Mono Red is. One of the challenges is all the glitters decks and mono red decks operate, they're aggressive decks, but they operate on two kind of different axes, uh, where red is trying to kind of turbo damage you as, as quickly as possible with, you know, like you've got Goblin Bushwhacker and you have uh, the, you know, you make through a bunch of tokens and you do that. 
And um, this deck is more like build up some artifacts, kill you from hand with all the glitters, or slap down early all the glitters, make a huge creature. So the kind of removal that's good against the two decks is very different, right? You want pinpoint removal often against all the glitters decks. You want more like sweepers against the mono red decks. So with all the glitters out of the picture, it's possible that people can sideboard a little better for mono red. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we need to axe a card for mono red in the future. Um, there's a handful of possible contenders for what that card could be. It could be one of the strong one drops. Uh, it could be Galvanic Blast, which would also impact Affinity. Uh, it could be Bushwhacker, which, you know, is a, seems like kind of a weird card to ban, but it does create some really explosive draws when you play Koldotha Rebirth, make a bunch of 1-1s, one and um, then pay, you know, a couple more mana for Bushwhacker and attack for just eight points of damage off those two cards. Um, so... Uh, yeah, it's possible we'll, we'll axe a card for Mono Red in the future, but we knew we wanted to hit all the glitters for now and see where things kind of develop from there because the card just was not super fun. And with Mono Red, it's a little more nuanced. All the glitters was clearly kind of the problem card here. With Mono Red, it's there's a few different options to pick from, and we want to make sure we not only hit the right one, but that it is appropriate to hit the right one. So we're going to give it a little more time. Um, we also, those are basically the two big decks to dis to discuss. There's other decks like Tal Talarian Terror decks, which I've noted in the, in the past in some previous articles and videos, don't even have above a 50% win rate necessarily. So we don't want to ask anything from there um, at this time. We also always talk about like the combo cards and decks like Familiars. Familiars is a deck that is often better uh, in person than online because of the nature of the strategy. So it's hard to get good data on it, but we didn't see enough to indicate knocking a card from there at this time. Now, when it comes to unbans, the big card we talked about a lot was Prophetic Prism. Uh, we really teetered back and forth on this one quite a bit. I've talked about unbanning this in some previous articles and, and videos. Um, ultimately, we decided not to do it at this exact time. A um, couple of reasons. One, we're on the precipice of Modern Horizons 3 releasing, um, and we'll have to revisit the ban list and uh, probably right after MH3. I'll get to more on that in a little bit. But we can see how things settle out there, decide if we think Prism would be appropriate for the format to enter. Uh, to enter back in. And two, the kind of decks that Prism is strongest in are also some of the ones that all that Glitters was strong against, like say Tron. And so it's kind of giving a huge boost. It's kind of like lowering this deck and raising this deck at the same time. And rather than move two variables at once, I kind of prefer to move one variable at once and uh, then see what happens before moving the other variable. But I think there is at least a decent chance you could see Prophetic Prism in the future. It was something we talked about a lot. Um, and especially, you know, after seeing the impact of other similar cantrip cards, like is it, it's um, the Refractor from Br Brothers War, uh, that card has been fine, and it's a little weaker than Prophetic Prism, but, um, you know, I, I don't think, like, Tron's going to make like, some huge comeback if Prophetic Prism uh, hits the format again, but we can wait and see, we can wait till after MH3 and, and see what happens. And then the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, is that stickers are um, being banned in Popper. Um, the, basically, any card that can place... Uh, sticker on something or create an, an attraction um, is, are taken out of the format. Now, attractions already weren't legal in Popper. Um, you, uh, you, did, there were not, you needed a minimum a number of attractions below an attraction deck, which there weren't at common, so that's a non-issue here. Uh, stickers, it really is Name Sticker Goblin on Magic Online. And then there's also like a fringe deck called Sticker Stompy that was showing up in paper. Um, but just for general tournament integrity reasons, among others, we've axed the whole mechanic from competitive play. And when the play design team came to me with this original idea a little while back, um, they they were like, hey, what will Popper think of this? And I, just, I was like, thumbs up. I think that they will, this will be good for Popper. Um, the name Sticker Goblin is not a particularly beloved card. It's like a random red ritual, which it's just a, you know, a red ritual that adds a random amount of mana is both a weird card to exist and like a card that fuels decks that are problematic, but it made sense to apply to all formats and not have Popper as the weird outlier, especially given that Popper is mostly played on Magic Online, uh, where stickers bear, like stickers don't even exist and name sticker goblin has to work differently, which is another reason why I'm happy to axe it, which it kind of made paper and online work differently from one another. Um, so one other thing I wanna get at is Modern Horizons 3. So Modern Horizons 3 is right around the corner. Um, previews will start with it in, in earnest very soon. And the last two Modern Horizons sets have had a huge impact on Popper, like really, really large. And I anticipate this one is going to be no different. Um, in fact, I looked through the commons uh, for the format or that were being introduced with Modern Horizons 3. And there's at least one of them that I am like pretty confident we're going to need the ban. Um, because that's so close to a card that's 
already banned in Popper. So um, I think there's a very high chance that we'll have to ban that card, and maybe even potentially some others. We'll see. Um, I would prefer to actually have these things bear out in practice, like it's worth trying them and seeing. But yeah, um, my guess is we'll have to take action. And what I don't want to do is what happened last time with Modern Horizons, where Modern Horizons 2 came out, and then um, both Chatterstorm and you know a couple other cards kind of caused some big problems in the format. So for a while until they were addressed. So my plan is we're going, and our plan on the Popper format panel, all of us, is we're going to revisit pretty quickly after Modern Horizon 3 hits. And if we're seeing things in the metagame that are problematic and seem tough to solve, uh, we're just going to ax them early on to kind of make sure that things aren't messed up uh, for too long. It, it can be, maybe it's fun to play a broken format for a week, sometimes that is, but we don't want to let that go on um, uh, for too long. So uh, we're going to keep some of the discussions going on things like Prism, on things like Red, see what the results of um, the All That Glitters ban are, and then from those three things, we're um, going to take all that into account as we decide to make any changes with the Modern Horizons 3, because MH3 is going to change things probably enough that taking all those elements into account um, of what MH3 does, along with what we've been talking about with Prism, what we've been talking about with the results of all the glitters, and what we've been talking about with um, the Mono Red deck, that allows us to make a little more informed decision after MH3 hits. But rather than wait until then to axe all that glitters, the play pattern was just so not generally not enjoyable. We were getting enough um, notes about that, and the decks that it, were in, it was in were strong enough. We thought we would just axe it right now. Um, so that's kind of where Popper is at right now. In general, I want to be doing more check-ins like this. Could be maybe informal like this. It could be more of the structured videos. You can let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm curious which format you like more. If you like this kind of direct talk to the camera, here's an update. Or if you like the more, hey, here's some card images moving around on the screen. Uh, this is something kind of new for me. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing more of those in the future. And the next thing you can expect, like I said, is pretty soon after MH3 releases, probably within a couple weeks after MH3 hits and we start seeing data on Magic Online. So hopefully that helps cover the bannings from today, or the banning, I should say, from today, um, and kind of our outlook at the future. I will once again point you to the dailymtg.com article for kind of a little more context and digging into things like the numbers and, and so on. But let me know what you think about this format in the comments down below, and it'll help inform future videos. I'll talk with you again soon, and in the meantime, have fun with the new state of Popper, everybody. And remember, you got this.